less. What we look for is generally speaking, a person who has got decent akhlaq, decent manners. And then Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam says, if you guys don't do this, if a person comes to you who is decent, he's got good manners, he's got a good religion, but maybe he's got, you know, some financial issues, he's not too stable financially. Or for example, he may come from a different nation or nationality. As long as he's got these issues, he's got these two characteristics, go for it and don't worry much about what will happen next. Imam says, if you guys start creating a lot of obstacles in marriage, then you will find more and more problems occurring in society. And actually, just as a side note here, we find this happening in this Western society. The average age of marriage 20 years ago for men was about 26 years and for women was about 23 years. Today, the average age for men is about 20, 33 years and for women is 29 years. That's the average age. So the man is at the age of 33, he's just getting married. And the woman is at the age of 29 and she just is getting married. So it's stressful even for the little kid and I totally understand that, you know. So when that happens now at the age of 33 and or the age or, or 29, one of the issues that we have happening there is the molding. What I mean by the molding is that at that time, by that time, the man has developed his lifestyle and the woman has also developed her lifestyle. And then it becomes a little bit difficult sometimes, not always, but sometimes. It becomes a little bit difficult to mold or remold that lifestyle to fit each other's lifestyle. The person, the man, for example, by the age of 33, let's say he's got a permanent job, permanent position in some institution. And the woman, let's say, has her job in a permanent, in, in, in some institution by that time. And then let's say they get married and after a year, for example, the man finds a better job somewhere else. He gets another opportunity. Then they say, well, let's move. And the woman would say, well, what about my job? You know, you got a better opportunity, but you know, there's no opportunity for me there. So that could be a problem for then the separation. The second problem could happen there is by the age of 33, again, or by the age of 29, now this guy has learned to live his lifestyle in a particular way, in a particular fashion. And she has learned to live her life also in a particular style, in a particular fashion. So sometime by that age of 33 or 29, you tell them, well now let's change that lifestyle a little bit. The guy, for example, may not be an outdoor type of guy, whereas the lady, maybe she is, she likes outdoor activities. They get married and at that time she wants to get out, do some outdoor activities. He says, no, I'd like to sit on the couch and watch movies, for example, at home. Or vice versa. And that will create a conflict. It will be difficult for each other to adapt. Okay? And that's why Imam al-Baqir says, don't introduce obstacles when it comes to marriage. If you find that there's a man who's got good akhla, good manners, and good religion, go for it. And then Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, a man came to him and he said, I have a daughter, who would be a good potential husband for my daughter? And Imam al-Hasan gave a, a very straightforward answer. He said, get her married from a muttaqi. And a muttaqi is somebody who's got piety. And piety is something that's above and beyond a little bit of Iman. Which means that a person, not only does he pray and fast, but a person, again, who's got some good manners that go with the prayers and the fast. So again, religion combined with good manners. And then the man asked, why, Ibn Rasulullah, how come? How come a person who's got religion and good manners? Why are, the, why are those two characteristics important? And he said, well, because if he likes the woman, you know, if he likes your daughter, he will honor her, you know, he'll, treat, he'll respect her, he'll treat her very well. And if God forbid, the chemistry never works out, things just don't work out. He will never be unjust or unfair to the woman. He won't do that. He'll be straightforward. I've had cases of, of, of some people who come across and, and like a lady, for example, came one time and she said, you know, my husband has just left me. 
That's it. He doesn't want to divorce me. He doesn't want to, like, you know, shelter me anymore. He's just left me. That's it. He's gone. And I'm like, well, does this guy come to mosque? He says, yes, he comes to mosque. He prays and he fasts, but that's it. Well, this is an, an example of an individual who, he's got the religion on one hand, but he doesn't have the manners on the other hand. Whatever he's doing is haram, it's, it's unlawful, it's unjust. And, and we try to speak to the man, we, we try to talk to him that, you, you know, if, if you want her, get, get her back. I mean, it's your, it's, it's her, it's her, it's your uh, uh, right, you have, you have, it's your duty. You have to be kind to her. You have some duties and obligations towards her. So you either fulfill these obligations, or if you don't want, just let her go. And the guy was, no, I want to keep her hanging like this. I mean, you have such individuals, unfortunately, in society, where they're troublemakers. And, and that is, is the condition of akhlaq or manners come in. That's where manners come in. So, these are the two main criteria. This is from the ahadith. Now, having said this, we, we also have some common grounds sometimes that are important. Mutual understandings of one another. And what do I mean by mutual? Now, this is, of course, not a mandate. It is not a mandate. And that's why the ahadith never mentioned it. But it is something that would help. For example, what do I mean by mutual understanding? Mutual understanding, now again, like I said, this does not have to be the case. But, for example, you get a, a lady who gets, for example, a, a doctorate degree in philosophy. And you have a, have a guy who does nothing about this world except farming potatoes. Which is nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing. The guy, this is what he does for a living. But then you get the two together. Now... She wants to talk about Aristotle and Plato, and the guy is talking about potato. So there is an issue here that will come up. So one day they'll be sitting over at the dinner table, and she's like, yeah, I've written this beautiful paper about Plato and his philosophies. And I'm like, yeah, I like potato too, you know. How can I farm it better? So there you see there is a lack of communication. There is no language. So like I said, this is not a basics. In marriage, it is not something that would not, not work. Yes, you do have individuals in the world today. I've seen many successful marriages where the man has a, a PhD and, and the woman, for example, only finished her high school. There are many examples of such things. But finishing high school doesn't mean she's uneducated. Just keep those two to get things together. Education not only means getting a degree, by the way. There's, there's a lot. That you, you have, I've seen people with PhDs who have such narrow-minded, you know, minds that I really get surprised. How the heck did you get your PhD? You know, so, but nonetheless, so there is a difference between degrees and education. So that's what I'm talking about. We're talking about a level of education here that is mutual. All right. I've seen some farmers. I have met people, farmers from Iran, in Iran. <laughs> who spoke about world affairs because they listened to the BBC and the CNN news and they're very familiar with what's going on in the world today. I mean, the guys are very well educated. And they're, they're farmers. They're, they're, they're poor farmers. <coughs> but it doesn't mean they're not educated. Okay, so, so do you understand what I'm trying to say here? So I'm not saying that, you know, we have an issue here with, with the professions. All I'm saying is that the communication, there should be some communication between the husband and the wife. Okay, that's when it comes to the characteristics to look for in a man. Then what about a woman? Just before we move on to that, what to avoid in men? Stay away from. He says, you know the hadith of Imam al uh, Abu al-Hasan alayhi salam, Imam al kazim he says that if a person comes to you he claims that he's got good religion, you know, he prays and he fasts and that you see him in the mosque all the time, which is good, but he's got bad manners. Tell him sorry. Bad temper. Or for example, he, uh, he lies. He's got that bad habit of lying. Um, he's got a bad habit of, of, of some sort. Now, like I said, nobody's perfect. But there are some individuals who have some quite noticeable bad habits than others. That individual tell them, sorry, no. And of course, there's another problem is, is somebody who drinks alcohol. And the reason I actually put that in there, I know some of you will say, well, 
we, we don't drink alcohol here. But I've, I've had a case. I have had a case where a, a person sent me an email and this lady was telling me that this man has is, is, is approached her for marriage and he's a family member, he's, he's a family. And she says she likes him, now, but he drinks. But she said he stopped drinking, but then he went back. But he's telling her that he will quit drinking for good. And that's it, he won't drink anymore. And she said, what do you think? I told her, this is a problem about to explode. You know, it's a bomb about to explode. He's, he, he, he quit drinking, then he went back to drinking, and now he's telling you he'll quit again and he will never drink again. I told her, you know, I, I foresee many problems in this marriage if it goes through. Now I told her, at the end of the day, the decision is your, your decision. It's not up to me to tell you what to do. You're the one who's going to be saying, yes, I accept. So it's your choice. I can't tell you what to do. All I can tell you is to advise you to stay away from such qualities because they could lead into some major problems. In fact, about 11 years ago, or 10 years ago, sorry, 10 years ago, I was lecturing in some parts, some city in the States. And there was actually a front page article of a man who came home one day. And this guy is, is, is a Muslim, is actually a Shia, or so-called Shia. He comes home one day and he, and he kills all his family, everybody, and then he shoots himself. The guy had an addiction problem, an addiction problem. So, so these issues do come up, they're real, they do happen in a society. We can't just turn a blind eye to them. So if you see something like this happening, unless the individual changes genuinely, he changes where he quits whatever he's doing and he leads a clean, genuine life and you see him, him doing this for a while, then yes, by all means. Then the decision is yours, you know, God forgives everybody. So who are we not to forgive? Okay? So these are characteristics to avoid bad manners and people who have addiction problems. Addiction problems. Alright? Good. Then, what to look for in a woman? Now, we live in a society that is unfortunately goes by the beauty of the woman. How beautiful she is. That's the first thing they look at. How attractive she is. You know, so, and, and we live in a society which, by the way, is even research shows that even this society itself is suffering from these notions of beauty. What is beauty? How do you define beauty? When they started defining beauty with certain sizes, for example, or certain weights, or certain looks, they started having issues. And one of the major issues is, is, is ladies, young ladies who are not eating anymore. They're not feeding, feeding themselves. They're going anorexic. So anorexia is a major issue these days for these young ladies. Because they look at these models and these beautiful women on television and they think this is what beauty is all about. They, they, they created this stereotype that these children now are trying to live up to. And that is an issue here. So, so we live in this, in this kind of society. And that's why, in fact, a few years ago, there was a French mega magazine in from France. You know, the real France, the real French guys. Sorry not to say that you guys are fake or anything. But um, in, in a French magazine, they actually published a picture or pictures of several models and actresses without makeup and the whole idea was to tell people that you know what this is what they really look like without all this glamour you know this is what they really look like so so even e even the media these days is trying to kind of correct the wrong that it has done the damage it has done now of course it's it's it's, it's like an, a drop in an ocean from the damages that they have done. But nonetheless, they've realized there is an issue here. So this is the type of society we're, we're living in right now, where everything is modeled to beauty or related to beauty. And by the way, this is not only here in the West. Unfortunately, the same magazines, the same movie channels, the same you know, satellite channels are also going to the East. And so they're living with these notions too. So unfortunately, that's also spilling over there as well. So he's got a good religion. 
but maybe he's got you know some financial issues he's not too stable financially or for example he may come from a different nation or nationality as long as he's got these issues he's got these to us what we look for is generally speaking a person who has got decent akhlaq, decent manners and then Imam Al-Baqir says, if you guys don't do this, if a person comes to you who is decent, he's got good manners, good characteristics, go for it. And don't worry much about what will happen next. Imam says, if you guys start creating a lot of obstacles in marriage, then you will find more and more problems occurring in society. And actually, just as a side for men is about 20, 33 years and for women is 29 years that's the average age so the man is at the age of 33 he's just getting married and the woman is at the age of 20, 29 and she just is getting married so note here we find this happening in this western society the average age of marriage 20 years ago for men was about 26 years and for women was about 23 years. Today the average age